was out working and uh, loading plywood and uh, after about 30 sheets of plywood, you're sitting there thinking, man, I need something for relief. And uh, I got to thank you, boy, if we're here in just a little while, I get to go to church. Amen. Amen. We got half of or we got all of it loaded and half of it unloaded, and I said that'd be good enough for the day. So, uh, Amen. So I'm so thankful uh, for all the Lord's did for us, the help that He's given us. Amen. If you got your Bibles tonight, would you go with me to Luke chapter number one and verse number thirty-seven? Luke chapter number 1, verse number 37. If you got it, you would stand with us if you're able. Very short verse here. It says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. Read it one more time. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Amen. Ain't that good? Amen. Y'all may be seated. I know it's not a, a big verse, but I was thinking about the exchange here with Mary and the angel. And he was thinking, coming to her to tell her, uh, you're going to have a baby. And she, boy, I got, that just don't make sense to her, did it? And, uh, amen. But I got to thinking later on in the years in Matthew chapter number uh, 19 and verse number 26, Jesus was having an exchange with his disciples and he began to take and tell them, uh, amen, as the uh, rich young ruler came to him and said, how must I be saved? And uh, he took and said, sell all that you have and come back unto me. And uh, amen, all the disciples began to take a look around and say, well, it's no hope for any of us. And uh, amen, a lot of folks seem to get that uh, one of them was a doctor, another was a tax collector. Those dudes had some money if you wanted to, probably the poorest one of them was old Peter, amen. He was just old fish he didn't have much money but uh, all the rest of them had pretty good professions before Jesus come Come along and they said how much are we going to make it into heaven and the Bible said uh, amen it would be easier for you to enter in uh, at a a camel's eyes for a rich man uh, amen to make it into the kingdom of God and uh, over in Israel there's a gate called uh, the eye of a needle now a lot of folks don't know that but uh, when you get there the the people would have to get down uh, and unload everything off their camel uh, and put it on the ground yeah, and make that camel get out on its knees uh, and lead it through that gate uh, and then on the other side of the gate tie, get it tied up uh, uh, put all the stuff back on there again uh, yeah. amen it was a pretty good chore uh, every time you come to that place uh, uh, so what are you trying to say preacher uh, uh, he didn't say it was impossible but he said a lot of times uh, like that young ruler turned away uh, and went his way uh, yeah, never ran anywhere where he ever got saved uh, uh, friend, let me tell you, sometimes uh, the world will look at us uh, and say, man, they're nothing but paupers, uh, 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 but we're rich on. beyond measure. Uh, 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 amen. We got things that's greater uh, than they can ever see. Uh, uh, eyes not uh, told, uh, and ears not heard. Uh, amen. That which lies in store uh, for the children of God. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So Jesus had exchange, and he said with his disciples, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Yes, come on. Thought going all the way back into Genesis and, and here's Sarah and Abraham having an exchange. She took and laughed and said, it ain't no way I'm an old woman. Uh, amen, I can't have a baby uh, in the beginning of it. But Abraham uh, uh, looked at her and said, is anything too hard for the Lord. Amen. Uh, amen. An exchange every time somebody uh, uh, questions, somebody said, I don't know that it's in my power uh, that this can go forth. Uh, uh, but every time, uh, amen, they had to lay it at the charge uh, of the Almighty God. Uh, uh, friend, I want you to know uh, it is positive in this life that we live. Uh, uh, most everything uh, that we would go for uh, would be impossible for mankind. Uh, but I sure am glad uh, and I'm serving a God. Uh, that's a looking at mine and your situation. The devil says it's impossible. The world says it's impossible. But God said, let me have a try at it. And now out of ten times, if it'll be his will, it'll come forward. The only way to avoid criticism is to do nothing, to say nothing, and to be nothing. 
Aristotle said that. It ain't no way to get around critics. It ain't no way for somebody not to look at you. Uh, Brother Vasto will say, well, I don't like this about you. Unless you just go into a cave or go somewhere and just hide and never show your face. Uh, friend, let me tell you something. That's what the devil's telling us to do. Uh, and I know I'm taking a little bit of crown work here. Uh, but Jeremiah 32 and 17. Uh, oh, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by the great power and stretcheth out the arm. And there is nothing too hard for thee. Amen. Uh, the last exchange. Amen. Oh, Jeremiah looked at the people. Uh, uh, Jeremiah crying at the beginning. I uh, uh, said, I'm going to take a bead down here to his sister. And uh, I won't never speak his name again. Uh, and Timothy yeah, pointed on. out uh, one of the third greatest, biggest books uh, in the Bible. Jeremiah 52 chapters uh, uh, later, he's sitting there uh, uh, taking proclaiming uh, that there is a God. Uh, and in his power, yeah, there's God. nothing uh, impossible to mankind. Uh, amen. Let me tell you something. Uh, the devil's a trying to tell you uh, just to stop going, uh, to stop pressing. Uh, but they that endure, uh, those that press through, uh, the Jews said, let's contend uh, for the faith. Uh, what are we fighting? Uh, not against flesh and blood, uh, but principalities uh, and powers of the air. Uh, we can't deal with them in the flesh. Uh, we ain't got the abilities to deal with it. Uh, uh, but the great God of heaven, uh, He took us dealt with it uh, all through the times. Uh, he said, when I come, uh, the government would be up on my shoulders. He said, I'll be at rock. A hewed out of the mountainside and a tear down the kingdoms of this world. The devil, he hates you. But I'm a king's kid. Have you ever seen anybody that wasn't jealous of somebody that's got everything? Amen. Amen. That's the reason the devil don't like me. Amen. I got everything at my disposal. My daddy, he owns the oil. My daddy, he owns the coal. Everything. Amen. And we got the world's God. And they'll take a great pressure in. And my father owns it. And my father has access to it 24-7. I'm telling you, the devil's just showing us a glimmer, a little bit of fool's gold. And saying, look here, it's shines. It's pretty. But it's going to take and draw dim. It's going to go dull. But what I've got, it'll go on for all eternity. Hey Amen. I'm looking for a city at the builder and the maker is God. Hey Amen. I'm telling you, I'm living in a beautiful world right now. Perfectly set aside by my daddy. My father, which art in heaven. Amen. He said, Hallowed that be thy name. Hallelujah to his name. Oh, yes. I'm talking about when I go out and see the trees in full balloon. When I ride down the road and look at the blackberry patches and all the white balloons on them. When I see all that, I don't think of science. I don't think of the things that this world looks at. But I think, how is it that my God I knew exactly when to set them? Exactly when to put the strawberries? Uh, on the plants. Uh, exactly when to put the blackberries uh, on the bush. Uh, amen. Ain't this something? Uh, he put it on exact times. Uh, amen. Yeah. When men and women uh, can go out and put them up. Uh, yeah. Amen. And give them time in between. Uh, I'm talking about a God. Uh, amen. It's doing everything in unison. Yeah. Yeah. And everything the devil does is in chaos. Yeah. Amen. Uh, one writer said, he said, if everything's going smoothly, you're not going fast enough. <laughs> Amen. But let me tell you something. When chaos comes uh, and trouble times comes, uh, it's because uh, that we're moving too swiftly uh, uh, with the world. Uh, and we're trying, uh, amen, to please everybody uh, other than the Almighty God. Uh, but God said, uh, uh, come, uh, uh, come, uh, and come to me. Uh, and I'll take and give you rest. He never said, uh, uh, go to the banks. Uh, he never said, go. And don't get me wrong, I know we have to do it sometime. Amen. Yeah, come on. Why? Because we got a lack of faith. <laughs> Amen. I'll pay double the dollars 
Every time I go get a loan, you know why? Because I have a lack of faith. It costs us not to believe in God, don't it? Amen. Every one of us is in the same boat right here. Amen. We've all had to go and borrow money. And we have to pay those late for those big payments. And the deal's paid off. It hurts, don't it? I talked to a preacher this week. He said, I bought one new car in my whole life. He said, the first month I loved it. He said, the other 59, I hated that thing. He said, every time that payment rolled around, he said, I think, my goodness, I wish I'd bought me a jalopy. I wish I'd bought something I could have paid cash for and stuck a few dollars in it here and a few dollars there. Amen. What are you trying to say, preacher? The devil's trying to do the same thing with our souls. He wants us getting hawk. He wants us getting dead with them. Amen. That way, when time comes to worship God, amen, we'll feel we we'll be littled. We'll feel like uh, we're no use. Uh, and we're of none account. Uh, amen. But let me tell you something. Uh, we got to get out free jail card tonight. Uh, his name uh, is Jesus. Uh, amen. He come to break down the strongholds of this world. I'm tired of being in debt. I'm tired of being in hot to the devil. Somebody said, Preacher, you've been in hock to the devil. Amen. Yes, I have. Amen. I've been so bound down. I've been so pressed to this or pressed to that. And I couldn't even go to the house of God and enjoy it. Amen. I done a job one time for a church. And something went wrong in the job. And potentially, it was going to cost me thousands of dollars. Amen. And I was sitting there at service, worried to death. Amen. Wringing my hands. I did nothing wrong. Amen. I wasn't even there when the problem happened. But the people that owned the machine that I was using I tore out of city main. And it was water going everywhere. And I thought I'd have to pay. Amen. Come on. Wrung my hands. Got a good job making good money. And there I'm sitting there during church wringing my hands. So they're thinking, oh my goodness. How am I going to pay for that? I should have never let them stay over. I should have done it myself. Bring in my hands. You know what happens when you take and start doing favors for folks that ain't in the agreement? Bad things happen. Amen. So now I'm wringing my hands and worrying. And I never heard a thing about it. The next day the city came up there, put it back in, never said a word about it. What are you saying? I was in hawk that night. I was in over my head. And I was worried about what was coming tomorrow. I, I was worried about what was getting ready to happen to my bank and account. And I missed everything that God had for me that Wednesday night. But friend, let me tell you something. We need to be free. Amen. From the things of this life. I know it's hard. It's sometimes impossible to come to the house of God and to forget about what's going on out there. I'm in the flesh just like you are. And sometimes I come to church and I got everything other than church on my mind. Amen. So that's what I'm talking We're in hawk to the devil. He knows what's going to get you. He knows what's going to tie up your mind and take the, the, the avatory of your mind and rob you of the blessings that God came. I believe every time we come to the house of God, that God came by to bless the church. That God came by to bless His people. And the devil has figured out a way to take it away. What's impossible for God? What's too hard for God? It ain't a thing too hard for him. Amen. And when everybody else is looking, uh, old Daniel opened up his windows uh, and looked unto Jerusalem uh, and called out to God. He didn't care what the decree uh, of the king was. Uh, he prayed three times a day. Uh, but later on, somebody went and said, Hey, king, uh, there's that old Daniel over there. Uh, he's over there uh, in your country uh, uh, praying to his God. Uh, uh, what are you going to do about it, king? Uh, amen. You know what? Uh, that king's hands, uh, it was in hawk. Uh, that king's hands uh, was tied because because he made the decree and he had to follow out with it. Sometimes we'll get taken down to Lodi Bar 
and dropped off and it was not against it was not in our will it was against everything in us but yet we got on the wrong boat we got on the wrong bus and got to the wrong city and dropped you off out there with a bunch of bums and a bunch of dogs and leave you out there in no man's land and that's what the devil's trying to do he said get on board come on take a ride with me just one time it won't hurt you just one time and your friends will love you for it just come on with me and when he gets you on the bus it's a one way trip down to Lodi Bar a city that was not made for God's people that's the devil for you but I'm glad he said I'm going to take a trip in that good old gospel ship I'm going far beyond the sky he said come on get on board Amen. 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 If you're looking for fault, well, too much fault you find. You'll surely be left behind. He said, come on, get on board. Don't look for my faults. I won't look for yours. Let's just both get on the same boat. Let's get on that old ship of Zion. Amen. With the stern of the ship, there stands the captain. Who is that captain? Amen. He's the same one. If you're born again tonight, he's the same captain for me as he is you. And yours is mine. How are you saying? At the stern of that old ship, there stands my captain. His name's Jesus. He's that power of all powers. He's got strength. And in His Spirit, and in His name, the devils will flee. Yes. So I've been in bonds. I've been in chains. And the devils are laughing. Saying something that little about somebody like him up. His father. But look at him. Do you think he's a gaze that's stalking you? And he's put that ball out there laughing at you. Hey, man, I remember when I was a little boy. Hey, man, when they're thinking, have a cartoon on, and it'll be a devil on one side and an angel on the other, and a big old Muriel right up the front of their head, and there's a show of playing. On this side, the devil's showing him what's going to happen and how much fun that he would have. On the other side, though, the one in white said, Oh, you better not do that. It's going to be trouble ahead. Amen. Most of the time, they made a play out of it and let them go with what the devil said. And that come out to be troublesome. It come out to be devastation to them. Amen. But guess what? Every now and then, they listen to what the little guy in the white said and then turn from it and then go home and the old cat didn't get a whooping about the mama when it got home. What are you trying to say? If we'll listen to the one. Amen. It's dressed in white. If we'll listen to that one that says don't go down yonder. We won't get a whooping when we get out of the ways of God. God's a jealous God and He loves His people. Friend, let me tell you something. Those that He loves, He chastens. And what I'm trying to tell you is the God of heaven if he's a whooping on you tonight it's because he loves you but what is too hard I don't want to be that guy that goes and sits down and does nothing somebody comes by and says nothing and if it comes to being a hindrance to the world, I'll go hide myself so I'll be nothing. I don't want to be that guy. That's what the world wants us to be. Yeah, Amen. I'm going to get political right here. And I hope it don't make you mad, but you know it's the truth if it does. Amen. That's what the Democrats want you to do. Yeah. They want you to go down yonder and hide yourself. Don't say nothing that offend nobody. Don't do nothing that offend anybody. And if it takes it, just don't be existing. Get away where nobody can see you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. But I'm an old time. Holy Ghost filled child of God. And when he comes up and they take a say, abortion's right. I gotta stand up and say it's wrong. When they come up and say 
same-sex marriage is, is right, I've got to stand up and say it's wrong. Why is that? Because my Bible says don't go down the ways of the transgressor, but be on a highway of holiness, of all righteous before my God. Friend, let me tell you something. And the world wants to bind us. I guarantee you 99% of the preachers is just like me. Every time they get ready to say, make a statement about things like that, the devil will fight on every time. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Why? Because everybody's got so politically correct. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not nasty and I'm not mean. I'm not mean to nobody. I'll try my best to love everybody. There's some people that's just not lovable. Come on. There's some folks that better spit in your face as they look at you. There's just some folks that wants to press you down. And I believe it this way. I don't care if it's family. I don't care if it's neighbors. If you got somebody in your life that's oppressing you down and pushing you down from every angle of your life telling you everything you do is no good. Amen. Get away from that person and cling to God. Why? Because He's always lifting you up. He's always telling you how good you are. Amen. Well, if, if God thinks you're that good, well, who in the world does this world think they are? Who in the world does the devil think He is? Amen. To tell us anything different. Yes. Yes. Just taking sword and through here. Thinking. Why is the warfare for the children of God so hard? Have how many's ever looked and said, man, they got a boat, they got a Cadillac, they got a fine home, and they're sitting at the house while I'm going to church. When I get out of church on Sunday mornings, they're done going to the lake with the big $40,000 truck that they drive pulling on that big $40,000 boat. It looks like it's unfair, don't it? In the natural eye, if we weren't looking at it through the spiritual eyes, we would look at it and say, man, we got burned. Amen. But after a while, amen, let me tell you something, that propeller, it won't turn on the lake of fire. That propeller won't go when it's a burning. But let me tell you, that's a city where I'm going. Amen. We'll be able to walk down the streets. That's transparent gold. We'll be able to run and not be weary. Shout the glory of God and tell him how worthy he is to be our king. Amen. Sit down at the banquet table. Eat with the Lord himself. What are you trying to say? I'm telling you, after a while, it'll be worth it all. But I want you to know tonight that I got a God that's right here right now. Amen. Looking in a spyglass. I remember that old song talking about the old church line. Amen. As it goes through. Amen. And it lands on you. Amen. I believe tonight that God's got a bullseye right on you. He's a looking bullseye straight at you. And you. And you. Why? Because he's if he's got his eye upon the sparrow. What do you think he's doing for you? Amen. Right. Amen. Yes, Amen. Right. Brother Aaron Sizemore said when he first got saved, before he'd take any kind of call, before he'd do anything, he said he was over in college at Virginia Tech. He said he and his brother would go out in the field behind the place and they would pray every day, seek God, read their Bibles. And he said one day they got to looking. And he said all through the clouds, the sun rays was beaming through. And he said, just everywhere. And he said, directly out a while, the clouds moved. The sun moved, something moved. And he, and he said, man, ain't that something? Look how pretty. He said, that's just not pretty. Uh, but that's searchlights. God sent them out uh, uh, looking for somebody to take and work for him. Uh, and he said, about that time, uh, when the clouds moved uh, at those rays, landed straight on him and his brother. Uh, he said, we shouted, we run, we cried. Uh, we done everything possible uh, because uh, we've been praying. Uh, uh, God, if you'll show us uh, in the clear light. Uh, amen. 
that you're called me uh, to teach Sunday school. Uh, I won't wait any longer. I'll go forth uh, and I'll teach the Word of God. Uh, and he said that night, uh, the old searchlights uh, uh, fell on him uh, and he knew it was God's answer uh, unto his prayers. Uh, uh, friend, let me tell you something. Uh, you may be, I've been out yonder uh, at the airport uh, and you'll see a big old light going around uh, the sky. Uh, what's it doing? Uh, it's letting the planes know uh, right here's the airport. Uh, yeah, it's sitting out a searchlight. Uh, amen. Let me tell you, you ain't went too far uh, and you ain't got too many things are going on. Uh, hey, God can't send out a searchlight uh, and put it right on you uh, and bless you right where you are. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God wants to bless His people. Amen. Well, what's the qualifications for it? Blessed are the peacemakers. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Go to the Beatitudes in the book of the fifth chapter. Amen. Of the book of Matthew. And it'll tell you what the blessings are. What He would do to bless you. But He didn't stop right John there. All through the book. Uh, from Genesis to Revelations. Uh, he said, if you'll keep my commandments, uh, he right. said, I'll be your God. Uh, he said, if you keep my commandments, uh, that ye uh, also love me. Uh, all through the Bible. Uh, he right. just said, just simply uh, uh, do as I say. Uh, I can remember as a young boy, uh, amen, when I wanted to do something, uh, and I knew mom and dad wouldn't like. For a few days, they had done everything that they did like. I mean, everything under the sun, they like I did it. The yard was mowed just right. The garden was hoed just right. And after a day or two, I knew my dad had come by and said, Boy, you've done a good job. What can I do for you? And right there, that's where I threw that ball in. I knew he wouldn't like it. But if I was going to get it, that was the time. And I said, I want this, Dad. And I can remember one time him, he said, I will never do that. He said, well, is there anything else I can do? I said, no, I want that one thing from you, Dad. I said, Dad, you always told me not to never do anything behind your back. I said, I've been mad enough. I said, I'm 16 years old. I'm mad enough. I come and told you what I wanted. I said, I didn't do it behind your back. But I've done everything right up to that point. <laughs> Why did I do that? Because I knew my request would be heard a little bit more deeply because I've been an obedient Amen. son. Sometimes we just got to do what he asks. Right. And there wasn't a whole lot of choices in it. Because if you didn't do what he asked, now you could do a half job and get by with it. But if you didn't do what he asked, there was other consequences. You had to pay another price. So, it's the same way. He said, do what I ask. That's not too hard, is it? Nope. Just do what I ask. Amen. It will be all that He requires of you. Amen. Now let me tell you, if it's against His covenant, He will never give in. If it's against His statutes, He will never give in. But now if it's something that's within Him, he may just say yes. Let me interject this here. I saw about a boat a minute ago. I don't want nobody to think. But I said, if you've got a boat, you're going to hell. But the Lord, I begged you for one. Did I ever tell you all a story? I begged God for a boat when my kids was young. Yeah. I said, Lord, I'd never go out on Saturday or Sunday. I'll go to church. And the Lord said no. I didn't like it. I went back and asked him again. He said no. Amen. I said, Lord, why? I was a brat, wasn't I? He never told me until the first time my son stood up to preach. He said, I did not want his eyes filled with all that he would have seen. And that's why I told you no. I wanted to run around that church 500 times and praise the Lord for telling me no. I didn't know the big picture what tomorrow held. But he does. Sometimes it's not sin just because he tells you no. See, a lot of folks, now they'll get told no and they'll go preach everywhere in the country. You can't have it. I can't have it. He's not a respecter of persons. You're right. And if you probably prayed right, he may have told you no too, but he may not have. 
You may going to handle it. Yes, Lord. What are you saying, preacher? I said, if you got it and I don't, the Lord says I can't have it. God bless you. Go on with it. Amen. But don't judge me because God said I can't have it. And say, boy, he's holier than thou. That's what happens. It ain't got nothing to do with you, and I ain't got nothing to do with it. Yours ain't got nothing to do with me, and mine ain't got nothing to do with yours. Come on. So what I need to do is just pray and say, God, yes. if you gave it to him, bless him. Yeah. It ain't thing wrong. It does me good. I got, if somebody gets something new, I'll walk around their new car. I'll look at it. And I know one of those guys said, oh, it's a Chevrolet. Oh, it's a Ford. Oh, it's a Dodge. I'm not one of those guys. If somebody gets something new, I'll walk around and I'll look at all the gadgets. I say, boy, that's all right. Yeah. And I'll try to brag on what God gave them. Yeah. Come on. It don't matter if I like Chevrolet. It don't matter if I like Ford. If they got something new, God bless them. They ought to be happy for them. Yeah. So I'll go around. I'll kick the tire. I'll look at the wheels. Boy, that's some nice wheels. Whatever it takes. I'll take it. I'll wham. Uh, I'll, no, it isn't. Razzle and dazzle. I walk through here and say, man, that looks good. Amen. You look good driving that. Now, if they ask me, would you like to have one? Probably not. <laughs> but I found in my life I've never been picky. If anybody wants to give me a car, I'll take it. <laughs> know what I'm saying? I ain't too good. <laughs> Give me a 1950. Well, Amen. definitely give me a 1950, I'll tell you. Yeah. What are you trying to say? Amen. We ought to be happy. Yeah. When our brothers rejoice, we ought to rejoice with them. Yeah. When our brothers and sisters are mourning, we ought to mourn with them. Yeah. We ought to be on the mountain with them. We ought to be in the valley with them. Yeah. When they need prayer, we ought to pray. And when they need us to rejoice and shout, we ought to shout and rejoice. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Come on. I'm not just up here just blowing the wind. I'm telling you tonight. When we take and get grateful for everything. I tell I tell Timothy today, I can remember the old timers, Dave, and you probably remember them. We were right by the house and said, Boy, I'd like to have that. I told Timothy, I said, But I remember the old timers. They wouldn't say that. They would drive by the house and say, Now, that serves. I would like to have one similar to that. They would never say, I'd like to have that house because they didn't want to take th anybody think they was lusting or wanting their brother's house. Yeah. So they would say, I'd like to have one similar to that. I'd like to have one something like that. One day maybe God will bless me with one just like that. Yeah. But they would never say, I want that one. But now it don't bother us. I mean, how many times? I mean, i done it. I told Tim, I said, e I mean, it's so easy. I was raised not to do that. But boy, I'll see something pretty. Boy, I like to have that. <laughs> it just comes easy, don't it? Yeah. Yep. So, what are you trying to say, preacher? Every time we bound, it ain't because we took and committed adultery and all these other big things. No. Sometimes we're just a little bit jealous. Right. Sometimes we're a little bit too prideful. Yes. Had a preacher friend come to a close. With this right here. Yes. Had a preacher friend, his son. Got the nicest truck of anybody's truck. Every one of his friends, their truck did not compare to his. His daddy called him into the house one day and said, you're prideful with that truck. He said, I'm going to fix you. He said, that big old $30,000 truck you got sitting up there, pull it behind the barn. 